Hello, my name is Simon Davy. Welcome to Our World in the Limelight. We now come to the sixth talk in my series on woodland, the move to the south of France. First, we go to an area in the Vosges Mountains in eastern France. This has the rather amusing name of Col de la Tête du Chat Sauvage, the hill of the head of the wildcat. It is an ancient woodland and has many of the qualities of similar woods in Britain. It does not have a rich flowering plant flora, but the trees support some interesting lichens. It is a mixed wood, dominated by beech, but also contains, as a native species, sycamore, as well as silver fir and ash. And in this photograph you can see it's mixed, and there are quite a few spaces between the trees, which should allow a richer plant flora. And here you can see Liberia pulmonaria, beautiful specimen of it, and it's one of the lichens present on the silver fir and beech in the wood. We then move south to the Cévennes, an area of limestone to the south of the Massif Central. The first woodland here is the Forêt de Boucheville, which in spring has a ground flora dominated by Scylla liliohyacinthus, and you can see that but looking very, very like a good bluebell wood in Britain. And on the right, you can see it, which doesn't really look like our English bluebells. And also seen here, Saxifraga stellaris, the starry saxifrage. Also in Seven is another fine woodland which supports good amounts of Liberia species. This is Fre des Fang the forest of the teeth, which has more open parts in it than in this photograph, which is rich in flowering plants and lichens. Plants such as this one, the beautiful Corridalis carva, and Globularia nudicaulis, which belongs to a group that doesn't, call, doesn't have any representatives in Britain, and the spurge Euphorbia Hibernic. Now we go a little further southwest, where there is cork oak woodland close to the Spanish frontier at a place called Le Pertus. Above them there is beech forest, and you can see there a cork oak which has been harvested. And plants that you see here, particularly one I saw just above the bottom of the wood, which is Orchis provincialis, and we can also see here Gladiolus illyricus, which occurs in Britain, but is very rare and concentrated in the New Forest. And here we are at the top of the mountain called Pic Nolos, and here there is a very natural beech tree line. In the woods here, I saw a perfectly good snowdrop, in spite of the fact it was mid-April. We now come to some natural sweet chestnut forest at Sudorg in the southern Seven. It is particularly fine to see a piece of utterly natural sweet chestnut forest. Sweet chestnut does occur in woodlands quite commonly in Britain, but it isn't a native species. Next, we see some very fine beech woodland at Superbes near Picherand beneath the Puy de Sancy in the southern Massif Central. And here I saw and photographed an interesting insect. It is an ant lion belonging to a non British group of lacewings. At least there is a species that occurs in the Channel Islands, but none in mainland Britain at all. This is the ant lion species Acanthacusis baetica. I certainly don't expect you to remember that name attracted to light at the hotel I stayed in. And also in the area, one can see the beautiful day-flying owlfly species, Ascalaphus libelluloides. This also belongs to the lacewing family. We should not leave mainland France without mentioning the scrubby habitat created by the dwarf oak species Quercus coxifera. 
as seen here, this species often finds itself a habitat within vineyards, a place such as Souths, which is close to the Mediterranean. This particular oak species very rarely struggles higher than knee level. And my goodness, walking through it, you don't get prickled. Finally, we are off to the Forêt des Tones in Corsica to see the Corsican pine forest. This is one of rather a few pieces of woodland consisting of a native pine in Europe other than Scots pine. A very good book, which you can see here in a picture, uh, is The Flowers of Europe, written by Oleg Poluna a long, long time ago. I still use it a great deal, and it is superbly illustrated. I can certainly recommend it for when you're looking at your photographs when you get back, because it is a bit heavy. And there are other smaller books on the French flora. Thank you for watching this video, part of my ongoing series on woodlands of the world and my own experience of them. In my next video, I may mean to look at the woodlands of the Mediter Mediterranean shores in two weeks' time is the plan. Before that, Amanda is planning to look at a little book that has been the key to our understanding of a work we have in progress on South Downs churches and their landscapes. Not all that we think we know about the solidity of the village church as as we think it is, both in terms of shape and use. Please like, comment and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.